fine, all right. Uh, get ready to bring it out. Yeah, the um, beloved, the beloved brother uh, Zahar gave me this shirt here. It's got the lion on it. I love it. See that? The lion. This is beautiful. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. So, uh, the lot of you, how about Shimmy How Shy? For the, um, for the brothers that, that give gifts and help out in the ministry and the sisters. So, uh, the lot of you, how about Shimmy How Shy? Are you Shalom, how about Shimmy How Shy? Rakata. Hashem, or Kadash. Let's go. Let's go. So I'm going to go into a <laughs> very important topic to go into tonight. Very important topic to go into tonight. It's a miracle I'm able to work out as I do. It is a miracle. And I know it's not of my own strength either. Lord have mercy. But it's important that we um, watch our health because these, these bodies are vessels of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, His temple. So if our bodies go down or our vessel, then it helps to it affects the ministry. If we can't move, can't stand up on the streets, then shall the righteous stand in great boldness. <coughs> so our diet, our exercise is still good, but ultimately doing the work, doing the work is, um, is crucial <coughs> and being able to maintain and sustain our vessels in order to do the work. Sound body, sound mind. So I want to go into this tonight. There's an article that I want to read. I'm not going to read the whole article. We'll go ahead and get ready to go into it. I'm just going to touch the wave tops. We have to share these videos because they're being badly messed with. Shalom, beloved. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Barakatai. Bashem or Kakadash. Shalom, beloved. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Shalom. Barakatai Yahweh. Barakatai Yahweh Shai. Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai, Kah Laimla Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem or Kadash. All praises to the Most High Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you in another lesson, we're not ignorant of his devices. So that his is talking about Satan. One of the translations of Satan is human adversary, human adversary. So it's talking about a Satan-like man, which is none other than Esau, Edom, and whom the earth is given to, pursuant to Job 9 and 24, the 13 Illuminati families, or Luciferians. These people worship the devil, they worship the spiritual demon, Satan. And ultimately, they deify or exalt themselves as a god. Self-worship. When you go into the tenets 
of Luciferianism, it exalts self. It makes oneself above the most high or equal to him. So it's blasphemy. That's why the Bible says, the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. So the buck stops with them. This is why they feel like they can do whatever they want and operate with full free reigns. Pedophilia, witchcraft, synthetic drugs. You see, because they're their God in their own mind. So, so they ignore the Most High's holy word. So that fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Heart goes back to the Hebrew word lob. So their mindset is there is none else besides us. You see, we shall not fear the most high God of the Bible, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, you Edomites are soon going to know the terror and the fear of the almighty power and the creator of the universe, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You will soon know him by ultimate terror and destruction that's going to come upon the earth. The heathens in the ancient world call him Alashadra, demon-like power. Alashadra. Imagine your heathen kids being snatched up before your face and just whisked away and dissipate in thin air. What was that? You can imagine Esau now. What the hell was that? Well, you're going to find out soon because you devils have been lifted up in great pride. Now you're making yourself a god, but you get ready to be brought low with all your gains. What was that? Jesus H. Christ. Let's go into it. So we're not ignorant of this devil's devices. So now they're blocking the article where I can't read it. What it's talking about using a digital device. I'll go ahead and talk you through it. So they're working on programs of a work release prison program where supposedly you're being released from prison but you're going to be tagged with a digital device so ultimately you're still going to have a digital leash attached to you that's going to be a part of your person implanted so your movements will be able to get monitored and under constant surveillance your vitals, whether or not you're angry, whether or not you're sleeping, whether or not you're traveling. So this is a critical prophecy in the last days. He calls it all. If somebody can post that, Boba Kasha. So when you look up cause, it's cause, action, and effect. Everything is based on Action, reaction, counteraction. Everything in the universe is connected. If we go and slaughter a village, then several generations down the line, our family members will get slaughtered because the Most High is a universal equitable balance manager. He balances equity and judgment. So whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Everything in the universe is connected. We kill somebody's kids, our kids are going to be killed. Or us, ourselves. Really, it's going to be us coming back as our children in the third and fourth generation. When you read our law, we come back and get slaughtered. There was no such thing as an accident. Let's read this. Brother Aramya Revelation 13 and 16. Please put the definition of cause, Bum Kashat, in the Greek. Revelation 13 and 16. And he, that he is talking about the Satan like man, Rome, Edom, Esau. 
the revised Roman Empire, and he calls them all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. So you have to have an incision for this digital device, digital device to be implanted. An incision is made when you go into that word mark, etching or sketch, incision, cutting. You see, so these uh, these wicked bug outs out of Mississippi was saying, how in the world can a digital device be a mark? These men have a high level demon assigned to them to make them bugged out of their mind. Then they're calling on Yabba Dabba Do God, all types of bugged out names. It's best to avoid these men and, and mark them. Let's go into that word cause. <clears throat> Comes from the Greek. Poeo, poeo. Sounds like yayo to me, but that's poeo. Prolong, obsolete. Make or do, more or less direct. See, to direct, to band together. See? Wow, be ready to bring, to cast out or commit. So what's going to happen is they're coming up with new provisional laws. Now all of a sudden you got to identify yourself in order to get your tax return. Now you got to be identified with digital credentials, encrypted data, or a code in order to be able to get your digital certificates certified and to get your tax refund. So they're standing these programs up in about 11 states nationwide. When I was growing up, we looked forward to our end of year tax refund check, the payoff bills, the payoff bills or help tie the loose ends, if you will. So these things are going to lead to riots. You know, the uproars of the people when you go to get your tax refund and can't. When you're looking to get your retirement check and can't. Your Medicaid, Medicare benefits. Your disability benefits. Social Security benefits. Well, you have not been credential or your encrypted data has not been certified. So you are a non-certified resident. So these are going to lead to uproars. But the masses are going to be pied piped. He calls it all. So the biggest motivator is what? Fear and economics, which is tied together. When we don't have economic security, that is tied to our fears, our insecurity. Where is our next meal coming from? Are we going to be out in the streets? How are we going to buy groceries? How are we going to survive? Stay warm in the winter and cool in the summer. So this economic collapse is a major driving force to cause all. 11 nations right now are on board to collaboratively come together in a unified digital currency or a global monetary currency under the SWIFT system, which is an acronym, and I've looked that up before. I'll go ahead, <laughs> I'll go ahead and read it again. 11 nations are on board. So this cause is associated with economics. Let's go here to SWIFT. No, nope, that's not it. I'm not going to make this long tonight. Once again, they're messing with me on these uh, search engines. So the BRICS is converting over to SWIFT. The BRICS nations, the, um, the big brother nations, the primary nations are Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa but they got a, a whole slurry of a confederation of other nations joined unto them. 
So they are converting over to a society for worldwide interbank financial telecommunications already comprised of over 3,500 investors worldwide to usher in a one world central bank digital currency. Let me read that again. Wow. So the, um, the primary big brother BRICS nations are converting over to a new global monetary system called SWIFT, a society for worldwide interbank financial telecommunications. So the central banks are tied to the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, the World Bank. So this is the architecture of the beast, Rome, the global elites, the Rothschilds, the Vanderbilts, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, the Onassis, the Gettys, you name it. There's 13 primary families which branches out to another 500 and something odd families. And don't ask me to name all 500. But it's less than 1% of the, uh, the global population. You see, it's like 0 0.05 something like that of these wicked global elite families. But they are the dukes, the earls from the ancient world, the dukes of Edom the earls, if you will, of the United Kingdom, the nobility of Edom. So the rest of Edom is upset with this because the small hats did not share the love, the wealth. They took all the gold and silver reserves, the exotic islands, and kept them to themselves. So you have the mainstream Edomites upset with this. So there is a political and economic divide amongst them. If a nation be divided against itself, or if a kingdom be divided against itself, it cannot stand. Let's go here. <coughs> Brother Gabar Ayash, serving in Hawashai, Isaiah 36 and 6. Lo, thou trusted in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt. Whereon, if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all that trust in him. How I many saw the video of Eve trusting in that devil? He dismembered her. While this word is going out, you're either being sealed with a right hand blessing of protection or you're being marked for condemnation. We told you this caveman was straight savage. So her boyfriend dismembered her, a caveman. We told you to watch this nigga, but you think the Bible is a fairy tale book. Here it is, this man then deleted 1.1 billion people around the world through eugenics, wars, World War I, World War II, a civil war, Revolutionary War, his mega trillion dollar pharmaceutical synthetic drug industry, and you're gonna go and marry this caveman. Well, you know what? I'm enjoying me a nice hot cup of tea. I'm not gonna shed one ounce of a fractional ounce of an ounce of a tear for you. We told you about this devil. Job 9 and 24, Malachi 1 and 4. So right now, that piercing instrument is the device he's using, the karax, tied to the karagma in the Greek, that he's going to use to marry you unto him, the beast system, his little miniature rod, if you will. That is his device that he's going to use to marry you to the beast system, where you're on a digital house arrests, buying, selling, traveling, 
medical vitals, blood pressure, cholesterol levels. Are you hyperactive? Are you violent? Do you have impulsive anger thoughts? You name it, will all be monitored. So this thing is happening as we speak. 11 nations are on board to mandate the tax refund through a credential system of being identified electronically. So we are nearing closer and closer to the end. Yeah, the Bible clearly says, never trust thy enemies. But a lot of Eve's got that big mama spirit. God loves everybody, baby. Stop listening to that Hebrew Israelite stuff. God loves everybody. All you got to do is believe and just call on Jebus. I love you, Jebus. And just go on with your life, baby. Don't worry about what these black Hebrew Israelites are saying. Just call on Jebus. You see, he may not come when you want him, but he'll be right on time when you just call on Jebus, honey. Well, you know what? We know that's not his name. It's Hebrew. And he spoke Hebrew. Now, you got one part right. He may not come when you want him, but he'll always be right on time. But in your mind, you got the blonde-haired, blue-eyed, golden retriever in your mind, Big Mama. And see, we're not falling for these tricks anymore. Your witchcraft is, is broken. So now that the spell is broken, this man needs a physical mark to join you unto him because nobody believes his games anymore. Esau was really, he's the real pimp. I'm going to just call, you, call it straight up. Just call it straight. Esau is the real pimp. So we've all been pimped out by this man for years. And now the spell is being broken. And there is no enchantment against the Lord's elect. And he can feel it. He's the real pimp. So we've all been in bed with this devil, thinking he loves us but we've been getting pimped out the whole time. <clears throat> Let's read this real quick. Brother Gabar Agash, um, Surat 12, Surat 12 and 10. Never trust thine enemy. No, we're going to just call on Jesus, all right, and think we're going to get through it by re re just totally rejecting what he told us in his word. <laughs> Sirach 12 and 10. Never trust thine enemy, but like us all. I'm excited. Never trust thine enemy, but like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. So whenever iron is exposed, then the true color begins to show. When you look at iron, it's exposed to the elements, air, air. Wind, rain, storm, cold weather, warm weather. So whenever something is tried and tested, their true colors come out. Try correcting a fake brother. Why are you getting on me? What's right your problem? Why, why you got to correct me that? You see? So he was a nigga on the inside the whole time. But when you try to bring the elements against him, correction, the word, the living waters, then that rust begin to show. That's sleazy E. Once we start prophesying, now the Bible is hate speech. It's diabolical now. Now the Bible is creating unrighteous decrees. Now the Bible is, is causing violence now. Or well, now they have a new term called religious psychosis. So now the Bible is being accused of being the harbinger of Wickedness, religious fundamental extremists, if you will. Look up that term, religious psychosis. So they're using psychological operation stories of a woman going crazy and shooting up a place or a man or often their kids. The Bible is in the blame, is on the blame line now. These religious extremists, fundamentalists, if you will are causing a disruption in a normal society. It's, what's, it's this punchline. So the Bible is clear, Surat 12 and 11. Though he humble himself, what crimes? Though he humble himself and go crouching, 
yet take good heed and beware of him, and thou shalt be unto him as if thou hadst wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. Burning Bibles, finding out the images were all dark-skinned people, the so-called Negroes and Native Americans or Latinos. So now he's showing his true colors, if you will. Rust, grimy. Imagine a grimy individual. That's sleazy. Along with the two-thirds of the house of Israel. So now their true colors are being exposed whenever this word is preached and prophecy goes forth. Now the Bible is being deemed obsolete. Now it's worn out its welcome, if you will. Now we're in a new time, not the quote-unquote proverbial Bible days. Every day is a Bible day, you numb nut. Every day is a Bible day. The Bible says, though heaven and earth shall pass away, yet my word shall not pass away. So this is a spiritual divine message that is applicable now, that was applicable yesterday, and that is applicable going forward. Prophecy is not World War III unfolding. Have not the Medes been stirred up? The Russian-Iranian alliance and its surrounding territories, Libya, Persia, you see, Turkey, had they not been stirred up as we prophesied, is not the physical implementation of the digital device being slowly integrated into the new buying and purchasing system under this beast. Yes, it is. So how is the Bible obsolete? Bob, wrong again. So when the scriptures come out, when rebuke goes forth, then the individual's true colors are revealed. Yep, 2 Ezra 6 and 27. For evil shall be put out, and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which had been so long without fruit shall be declared. Beautiful. Chad Warden was timed out. What did he say? Chad Warden. Let's read his comments. All right, because I don't know if he's sincere or not, but he's just been timed out. So I don't have time, so I'm going to just keep going. And really, the men should be just posting scriptures. Okay, now he's been hidden. So another demon. Okay, zapped by raid. So to the wicked, this Bible is like raid spray. Just zapped another roach. Good job. The water, the water you how about shimmy our shot? Let's go to Job. I want to show something in Job 20. So the chip is a major prophetic event in the end of times, what they call eschatology. So these prophetic events will not be disannulled or we're not going to be able to forego these prophetic events. A part of that straight and narrow path of tribulation. Persecution, see? So we can't forego what's been foretold by the prophets. Yahweh Shai understood this when you read Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. You see? Where did I want to go? Job 20. See, a lot of weak men are being exposed too. You can only sit around with your thumb up your backside, but for so long, your stink is going to come up. And eventually, everybody is going to sniff you out. You're just a weak, scared, emotional, sentimental man that's dross. The Bible calls you worthless or dross, you men that are not diligently laboring and pushing this gospel in the ministry. We're under attack every single day. And you sitting back dipping a banana and some vanilla pudding some damn where. All right? 
absolutely worthless. When you go to the ATM, you need to put on a ski mask because you're robbing the nation. Okay? Bloodthirsty criminal. Let's go to Job 20. <clears throat> Book of Job, chapter 20. Let's go to verse 22. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. So these other nations are rising up against this beast system. Uproars of the people. So the wicked in this context is talking about the disgruntled people, the citizenry. These other nations are rising up. Job is saying what Habakkuk said. Shall not all these take up a parable against thee and bite thee? And what brother Obadiah said. All the men of thine confederacy have met thee even at the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. See? Seemed like a sergeant major. No, I was not a sergeant major. Nope, I'm not a sergeant major, and I'm retired anyway, so that's, that, doesn't, that's, that doesn't matter here. Let's read Job 20. Job 20 and 22. In the fullness of his sufficient. Okay, Melly Malak, you're being a little too chatty. Oh my goodness. Job 20 and 22. In the fullness of his sufficiency shall he be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. See? So these, these, these nations are going to rise up against him. <coughs> Let's go to verse 23. This is where I wanted to go right here. Job 20 and 23. Same individual. And yeah, what they do is create multiple YouTube accounts. You got to be a bitch made man to have nothing else better to do other than cre keep creating YouTube accounts. No photo of yourself, but just keep coming up with comments to interrupt the lesson. I mean, absolutely worthless. So there's the scripture that I like in 2 Ezra 9 that let the multitudes perish that was made in vain. So they're going to be cannon fodder, fuel for the fire. Somebody get that in case somebody listening that's new. I'm a one of God. You're mean. You're evil and corrupt. Let's get that in Isaiah 9. They're going to be fuel for the fire. So we're not going to see a broke back man anymore. They're going to go extinct. A broke back man, that's going to be a thing of the past where we're telling our grandchildren about. Back in those days, son, the men didn't have a backbone or a spine. And Big Mama had them running back and forth to the grocery store to go get some damn pig feet and, and ham hocks and ham sandwiches. So we're not going to see these men in the kingdom. The Bible says the effeminate shall not inherit the kingdom. I promise you I didn't make that up. So a broke back spineless man is going to be the thing of, of old underneath the Edomites that we're going to tell the stories to our grandkids. No more broke back spineless men, son. Second Ezra 9 and 22. Let the multitude perish then, which were born in vain. But let my great be kept, and my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect. So the Lord's plant is his noble vine. Masculine men. And real ladies. Okay? Not wildebeests and orangutans and gorillas. So there's a distinction between the masses and the Lord's noble vine, his elect. When you're really in the truth, you have no sentimental, emotional attachment or connection to those that are not grounded in the spiritual walk. <clears throat> you're numb to them. Let's keep going. I want to get back to Job. That's a key point. 
Let's read this about these effeminate weak men. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. See? No spying. So you're on borrowed time underneath Camp Bedrock. All right? This pedo queendom is on its way out. This pedo queendom is on borrowed time. So we're witnessing the last few grains of the sand in the hourglass getting ready to go through that little tight, small funnel, a little bottleneck portion. And the devil knows this. So he's expediting these digital house arrest devices. Then they're going to claim that it's going to decrease crime. It's going to track criminal behavior, which is really all punchlines of propagandized media. <clears throat> so Lord willing, I get to see the last day of the last standing limp noodle backbone man. Absolutely worthless. <clears throat> Let's read this. Brother Zadok, Nahum 3 and 5. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame. Yeah, that's talking about right now modern-day Nineveh, which is Babylon the Great. Please, Isaiah 9, I think it's 18. They're going to be fuel for the fire. So that's talking about the daughter of Babylon or spiritual Nineveh. When you go into uh, Nahum 3, ancient Nineveh was judged, but now we're in spiritual Nineveh, Egypt, Sodom, Gomorrah, Rome, Greece, Philistia. Let's get back to Job because we need to get ready and close this out. Job 20 and 23. When he is about to fill his belly, God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. So the digital device, he's going to try to crown his NWO a success by marrying people's multitudes, nations, and tongues from every sect of life, every walk of life, every language, religion, culture, ethnicity to be married unto him. See? So the nuclear destruction does not come until he tries to crown or put the finishing touches on his NWO, the digital device, to be married to this pimp, Sleazy E. I just keep seeing a caveman image with all gold grilled teeth, with his hat to the side. That image keeps popping up. Hair all over his face, a Sasquatch with gold teeth, and an Oakland Raiders hat turned backwards. That's the image keeps popping up in my brain. I don't know why. Showing his grill. That's the real pimp. Let's get this about fuel for the fire. <laughs> Brother Aramia, Isaiah 9 and 18. When wickedness burneth as the fire, it shall devour the briars and thorns. Briars and thorns are prickly people. They're wicked. Edom, Edomites and you got Israelites amongst these briars and thorns. Read Ezekiel chapter 3 and Ezekiel chapter 4. And scorpions. Isaiah 9 and 18. When wickedness burneth as the fire, it shall devour the briars and thorns and shall kindle in the thickets of the forest. And they shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke. See? So the, the wilderness. You see? So judgment starts with Israelites and amongst the nations. We're scattered throughout these other nations outside of the motherland or Jerusalem. Isaiah 9 and 19. 
through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the Lord darkened and the people shall be as the few of the fire. No man shall spare his brother. Beautiful. So the Lord is kindling a fire in the midst of the daughter of Babylon. Nuclear missiles. Okay. Let's keep going. So I want to go into this word, feel. Feel his belly. So this is giving us some insight into what he's trying to do is crown his new world enterprise a success through the technocratic means or devices. You see, just lost my damn train of thought. Yeah, let's go back to Job 20. And we got to get ready and close this out. We're going to go into the blue letter. That's what I wanted to do. Let's look up that word, fill. And he is about to fill his belly. But one thing I can't stand is a weak man. Here it is. Every day we're under attack. Racism, discrimination, synthetic meat. Fake pharmaceutical medicinal healing properties. Okay? Being abused by the police. Police brutality. Filling America's prison system with our men. Creating or cultivating young effeminate men by paying a single mother household to do so. You see, where Eve is being seduced by this proverbial snake in the grass again and again and again and again. She sees money as love. So in her mind, she believes she's being shown love by these government carrots, benefits. You see, when in reality, he is destroying you. You don't come back through another woman, but through the seed of a man, an Israelite man. So he was able to side destroy you from the side or from the back door. A sidewinder snake, look that up. A sidewinder serpent. This man was very cunning the way he did this thing. Your man ain't shit, but yet we're gonna put together a $30 billion a year package to pay you to keep his ass out of the house. You see that? So ultimately, after about three to four generations, your men are destroyed. They're in prison, dead, or broke backs. So how do you come back, Eve? So this devil lied to you. Why you think he put together a $30 billion government surplus package? But you thought that was love. My pimp loves me. He loves me dearly. I'm good. No, this man don't love you. He used you and weaponized you through feminism. Anyway, let's go into this fill your belly. So you can only come back through the stem of an Israelite man. That's it. But he didn't tell you that. He said, no, that man ain't shit. Get rid of him. Unbelievable. And he is about to fill his belly. Let's go here to that word, fill. Something should trigger in your mind. If I'm getting all these incentives, somebody lying. On one hand, he's worthless, but I'm making all this money to keep him away from us. So some, something is not adding up here. So when you go into that word, fill, it comes from the Hebrew word, mala, mala. Mala, which means to confirm, to consecrate. So they're trying to consecrate their gains, dividends, on all the wicked, laborious works they've put into this kingdom. You see, false religion, synthetic drugs, wars, child sacrifice. So they're trying to consecrate their gain based on their blood sacrifices. 
Whenever you worship the spiritual demon Satan, you need blood sacrifice. Many of these wars are sacrificial. They worship the god of a war, Mars. That's why Desert Storm is a good example. You see, invading Iraq around March time frame. And then that um, Feast of, uh, is it Feast of Bontain? Somebody help me out for pronouncing it right. Feast of, uh, from April 19th to May 1st is a heavy blood sacrificial time frame. It's called Feast of um, Montaigne. I don't worship the devil, so if you know the right pronunciation, please, please spell it. You see, that's a heavy window for blood sacrifice. So when you look at the creation of the Edomites, they were used as a population control mechanism, which goes back to Proverbs 16 and 4. Keep going. So Phil, when he is about to fill his belly, the Lord shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him. Phil, to satisfy or set to, wow, look at this. Oh man, I got so excited I lost it. To be at an end. So these are the finishing touches through the digital age, through his technocracy, Bluetooth and five, 5 and 6G being wired or literally electronically connected to the B system. And he was about to fill his belly. Satisfied. Wow. Furnish to gather, to gather that heap of unto him all nations. See? So the finishing touches is electronically and digitally linked in ethnicities or nations, cultures, religions, into the universal Fundamental beliefs in Luciferianism, the light bearers, self-worship, paganism, feasts of Beltane, the water. See? So every nation will sacrifice to their God, the spiritual demon, Satan, and willingly give up your kids, especially after you've been marked. Because if you resist, you can be deleted or unalive remotely. Okay, if you don't want to be a broke back man, then they'll just turn off your chip or send little shock waves. You see what you call it? Shock wave treatment or electrical stuns. They, may, they put this in the movie. Um, it was called, it was on Tubi. I think it was called Implanted. Implanted. If somebody could put the correct name on there, a movie on Tubi. I think it was called implanted. Every time she was, she decided not to comply, they would send digital shockwaves to her. Hell, they used this in, in warfare during the uh, interrogation techniques. What's your mission? As soon as you don't comply, they can do this remotely. So that technology exists. Oh, you're a religious sociopath you're you see religious psychotic now you know whatever so that's pretty much it god shall cast the fury so then the nuclear destruction come when you read further we'll go ahead and read it <clears throat> see <clears throat> right let's read this yeah it was called implanted the water beloved see these are real men that are diligent and consistent they're not hiding with their head up the backside of a jackass somewhere hiding out these men are visible and diligent and sincere uh, Job 20 and 23 
when he is about to fill his belly. Crown his enterprise a success, being integrated into this digital electrical grid, permanently married to the beast. The system, Job 20 and 23, when he is about to fill his belly, God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. So come on in this house, children. It's going to rain. So it's time to come underneath the tabernacle of this doctrine, quick, fast, and in a hurry, because it's going to rain nuclear missiles. Verse 24, he shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel shall strike him through. Beautiful. Nuclear missiles. And the missile silos are still active, yes. But the quickest tactical way to launch the initial volleys of missiles, they're called valleys. One whole barrage at one time, a missile valley is through the submarines. And then what else after that? The quickest. Mobile trucks. Missile launch systems are on these um, trucks. They're truck launchable missiles. And then, <laughs> and then the slowest way is through the missile silos. But they're going to use those because the Bible says utterly waste her. So I surmise, speaking as a man, they're going to start with the Quickest one, submarine launch. We're talking seven to 15 minute striking distance. Ugh. Followed by the, the mobile truck launching systems or platforms. Followed by the ground launch missile silos. You see? But either way, they can launch them with the new hypersonic missiles as well. But they still have some of the older ICBMs that they're going to shoot off as well but they're going to literally exhaust their missile systems. <clears throat> they're going to shoot them all. But this is the war to end all wars. So that iron weapon or the bow of steel are these nuclear missiles. He shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel shall strike him through. It is drawn and cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his gall. Terrors are upon him. So the body are the missile silos. It's in an underground silo. They got multiple launch platforms, you see, that they can use. And, and with the missile silos, they can still put the hypersonic missiles in those. But it it doesn't matter because either way, they're going to use every launch platform because the Bible says utterly waste her, spare no arrows. So these arrows are these nuclear missiles, intercontinental ballistic missiles. But tactically, speaking as a man, I would use my submarine launch platforms first that are in the uh, off the sea coast. Within seven minutes striking distance, seven, 15 minutes, and then my road mobile launch or truck platforms next, followed by my underground missile silos in that order. Take down the defenses first, and then the subsequent valleys and missiles would be shot, reinforcing the initial strikes, reinforcing fires multi-layered, multi-pronged attack, air, land, sea, space, don't forget that, cyber, uh, electronic jamming, jamming these, the ballistic shield, shutting that down, taking out the digital grid where you cannot shoot because everything is on a computer now, shutting down your C2 or command and control nodes, your computer grid and network. Now you're in the dark, you can't shoot, neither can you block missiles with your ballistic shield. You're a sitting duck. Uh, 
All right, I think we could end it here. Brother Aramia, Job 20 and 27. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity and the earth shall rise up against him. So the heaven is talking about the tabernacle of the Lord's temple, his prophets, utilizing the internet, YouTube being a major vehicle to push the gospel. So knowledge has been increased through technology. We don't have to get on the plane to try to go climb Mount Everest because we got a bug out as Israelite up there talking about I haven't heard the gospel. Well, you need to get your butt on the damn computer or pull out your iPhone. You don't have to go hike Mount Everest up there freezing trying to read, you know, cry aloud, spare none. Hell, hell no, man. That's bugged out. So the major vehicle doing the major lifting is YouTube. So knowledge has been increased pursuant to Daniel 12. <coughs> I think we can end it there. So the key point is when he is about to fill his belly, which is trying to crown his enterprise a success. This is why when you look on the $1 bill, and I love that topic, you got an all-seeing eye there, which represents the eye of Horus. Some people say the eye of Lucifer or the eye of Osiris. Nevertheless, ultimately, it's pagan. But it all connects back to the international bankers, the wicked global elite. Brother Zadok. Brother Zadok, Isaiah 13 and 5. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. So these missile silos are still active. They're still active. And what they're doing is, I suspect, they're changing out the old ICBMs with the new hypersonic missiles. But that takes time. So they're going to shoot off what they have. So these missile silos are a part of Bible prophecy. But don't, don't rule out the submarine launch platforms as well, along with the uh, road mobile truck launch platform. So they got multiple launch platforms. <clears throat> and they also have these... Um, now they can guide these weapons from outer space as well. So this new fight, this new war, is going to be intergalactic. You see, air, land, sea, space, cyber, you see, it's going to be like nothing we've seen before. It's going to look like something out of a damn Star Wars movie. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Isaiah 13 and 6. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Beautiful. So the day of the Lord is a day like none else. So he's going to mark his entry with the most catastrophic weapons. Weapons of mass destruction. Weapons are going to be launched from the new nuclear missile silos. They're going to be launched from submarine, nuclear-capable submarines. Missiles are going to be launched from road mobile truck platforms, multiple launch platforms. This is why the Bible says, if somebody can post that, spare no arrows. So even unto this day, a nuclear missile it's called an arrow. They even made a movie called Broken Arrow. You can look that movie up. I saw it, I think, in the 90s. It was referring to a nuclear missile. Even until this day, they're called arrows. So the Bible is the most powerful, accurate book. The more you try to disprove it or deny it, you just wind up looking like a cartoon character, a clown, Bozo the Clown, flame of fire. Let's close out here. 
Jeremiah 50 and 14. Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she have sinned against the Lord. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. So it's written in our law that a witch is supposed to be burned with fire. And the children of Edom, which is joined unto the daughter of Babylon, is a witch. Their pharmaceutical practices, their religious practices, you see, is all goes back to ancient witchcraft. Hypnotism, charms, psychiatric palm readings, diviners, witches. Hell, they got a national witches network here. A national psychic hotline. Somebody post Leviticus 21 and 9. Leviticus 21 and 9. So Edom comes out of Isaac. <laughs> the daughter of Babylon, the children of Edom. So his kingdom is a kingdom built on witchcraft. The mistress of witchcraft, the mother of harlots. When you read Revelation chapter 17 and Nahum chapter 3. Let's close out here. Hey, brother, it's okay to say con maybe once or twice, but I haven't seen you post one scripture. Just con, 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 con. That's what D-Rock do outside of the liquor store with a bottle of Coke 45 beer and liquor in his hand, wrapped in a paper bag. Con, 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 con. You see, that's what D-Rock does with his hat turned backwards. An Oakland Raiders hat turned backwards or sideways. Why not post the scripture? Con, 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 con. You see? Ah, damn. Let's read this. Brothers of Doc, Jeremiah 50 and 14. Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she have sinned against the Lord. See? So the daughter of Babylon is a witch. The entire construct is built on witchcraft, mysticism, the mystery religions. Um, I think it's Leviticus 21 and 9, Bobakasha, the law as it relates to a witch or the daughter of a priest. Isaac is a priest. The daughter of Babylon, the children of Edom, comes out of that of that uh, loins of the loins of uh, Isaac. This kingdom, this pedo queendom, really vexes my spirit. Exodus twenty two and eighteen: Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. So uh, the law is a harlot of a priest. Well, remember, she's both. She's a witch and a harlot because of her spiritual fornications, mysticism, Gnosticism, or Gnosticism, which is, uh, it means to know, it goes back to the sciences, which is really a religion in itself as well. Psychic palm reading, diviners, Tarot card readings. We still don't have Exodus 21 and 9. I mean Leviticus. Maybe I'm bugged out. Am I calling it wrong? Let's see if I can pull it up. <clears throat> Leviticus 21 and 9. And the daughter of any priest if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profaneth her father, she shall be burnt with fire. So the mistress of witchcraft, the mother of harlots, is none other 
than the daughter of Babylon, America, which cannot be detached from the children of Edom. We cannot separate the daughter of Babylon from the children of Edom. They're one, they're joined at the hip. This is their queendom. Let's close out here, Brother Bunyan Yasharala. Revelation 17 and 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, drinking blood, child sacrifice, pedophilia. So these are the byproducts of feminism, witchcraft, women's liberation. You see, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. A famous Satanist, Anton LaVey. And also study Aleister Crowley, high level sorcerers that are lauded as heroes, innovators, pioneers in black magic and witchcraft. They're supposed to be bird feed, Aleister Crowley, Anton LaVey. So for you to laud, to laud these men as heroes, well, they're, they're bird feed now, but they should have been bird feed while they still were talking and operating in that spirit. Bird feed. But here in the daughter of Babylon, the mistress of witchcraft, the mother of harlots, any and everything goes. Money, hoes, and clothes, all a nigga knows. Tell them not to sign. <laughs> this place is wicked as hell. For the flame of fire, Revelation 18 and 23, and the light of the candle, Revelation 18 and 23, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants, for by, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. So when you go into that, the sorceries, it's their pharmaceuticals. You see, they're synthetics. There's a book called, um, it's a book on magic and witchcraft. The spirit is like, don't even say it. I was getting ready to say it, but the spirit is like, don't, don't even say it. But they use that book of ancient spells and witchcraft to come up with their ingredients to your milk, bread, cereal, your food, your meat. Matter of fact, in Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A, I know you've heard of Chick-fil-A. One Chick-fil-A sandwich got over 20 harmful ingredients in it, many of which are addictive. So these are all ingredients that go back to the ancient witches and warlocks of Chaldees. You see, this man is truly, indisputably, undoubtedly, undoubtedly the devil that the Bible speaks of. Eve went and hooked up with this man and went out on a date with him. And he dismembered her. But she's, she's surprised, by the way. Well, she's in her right mind right now in the kingdom. Like, oh my goodness, good to be with you, Lord. I don't know what went through my mind when I hooked up with that caveman, you know? And see, now the Lord's going to have mercy on him. But when we go into, into the, to the spiritual realm, then we're able to see everything clearly. What was I thinking to hook up with this savage? Let's read that again. Revelation 18 and 23. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations to see. Come and get the icky vicky. Come and get the thingamajig. You see, the icky vicky. Victoria will put you in a casket. That's what vicky will do. That girl is poison. So if I was you, I would avoid Icky Vicky, Victoria. 
okay? I'm just telling you. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're probably a part of the two-thirds, okay? We got to watch what we say because the devil will take down the video. So that girl is poison. Kissed her, missed her lover. Wrong move, you did. That girl, I'm trying to tell you. So it's best to avoid the icky vicky. We told you. And a lot of you jakes, I ain't worried about nothing. I run this shit. I ain't worried about nothing. You D-Rocks is going to be bird food. I'm just telling you. Damn Oakland Raiders baseball cat turned sideways. Your ass is grass. All right, you're on borrowed time. All right, you simps. All right, I have emotional immunity to these bug outs out here. There is no spiritual, sentimental, emotional attachment to these bug out reprobates out here. Men, women, and children. And that's the mindset we're supposed to be in. Emotionally numb to them. Period. That's your brother. That's your brother. Watch out for those. That's your brother, Israelites. Usually their page is blank. They were raised by Big Mama, you know, wearing a damn shower curtain wrapped around her waist. These men are bugged out of their damn mind. Everybody, that's your brother. That's your brother. Nigga can be out selling pharmaceuticals in his neighborhood, doing drive-by shootings. That's your brother. That's your brother. This is why the Lord is getting ready to clean house. There's a lot of crummy, crusty the crab jakes walking around here. And some of them are pretending to be in the truth. Crusty the crab jakes. That's what Yahweh was getting into in that parable, Matthew chapter 13. That the, the truth is like a net cast into the sea. And it brought up every kind, unclean and clean creatures. So the unclean are the shellfish type, crusty the crab. Scorpion bug out jakes. But then you got the the lawful meat for repentance with scales and fins. The elect. Let's go ahead and end it there. With no emotional, sentimental attachment to these bug outs out here. These people are crazy as hell. And many of them are under high level black magic and witchcraft. So we pray for the Lord's elect. So if there are elect amongst witches, they're going to come out of that. Or if there's elect men that are in the uh, Rainbow Coalition or Skittles group, these elect men are going to be born again. And they're going to be cleansed by the preaching and teaching of the word. So we pray for the elect. That's going to come out of those behaviors. And we still have love for you. If, if you're amongst the Lord's elect that are sincere and going to come out of those behaviors. But if you're in the world and basting yourself in wickedness, then no love lost, all right? Crusty the crab. There's the door. There's the door. Let's go ahead and end it there. First Peter 4 and 17 by the brother Son of Yahweh. Well, son of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai as well. The water beloved for the scripture. The water Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. First Peter 4 and 7. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them? that obey not the gospel of God. Exactly. So the Lord's judgment starts with those that know they are Israelites and with the nation of Israel in general. So the judgment starts with those that he put in charge. Remember, I have said, ye are gods. You don't go yelling at a little janitor at a, damn, a school administrative building somewhere. So the Israelites were left in charge. The Israelites were given the managerial guidelines and instructions on how to rule. The Israelites were given the book of the law, of the commandments of life. So the Lord ain't looking to set up somebody that was not set up in the first place to reestablish order and control of a kingdom. But the house of David in whom the roles of responsibility was pinned on the chest of. 
is who he is raising up and is who were shown his judgments. As for the other nations, they have not known him. Go ahead and end it there. So I tried to be as edifying as possible. Yep, Brother uh, Anah, Proverbs 24 and 1. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. Exactly. So we looking at this man, he has a space force. This man owns the mega trillion pharmaceutical drug industry. He's got a military. He's got cavemen in space suits and up in space and, you know, eating caviar and steak. So we think this man is literally sitting above the world, you know, riding on cloud nine, if you will. This is his heaven. Because remember, the elements are going to melt with fervent heat. And the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. So old man Sleazy E is going to pass away with his kingdom. This is his heaven. So we don't need to be envious at the wicked in foolish envy because they're getting ready to be thrown down to the ground with great violence. I don't want to be an Edomite. Hell, I'd rather be a Moabite than an Edomite because the Edomites are not going to be shown any mercy whatsoever. At least these other nations are going to be reset back in their lots. Reset, okay? And I want to speak something real briefly about brothers. Brotherhood, I mean. Brotherhood, excuse me. <clears throat> real quick. So part of the fruits of the Spirit is how we treat each other. It's how we treat each other. Sharing brothers' videos and dropping a scripture or two every now and then. That's helping to uplift one another. Doing videos to start with because energy rubs off. It's contagious. That energy helps to provoke thought because why? It is the spirit of the word being taught. So this is why we cannot quench the spirit. Don't be that selfish dude. You never share brother's video or every once in a blue moon you do, or you very seldom even do a, a video, or you, you, you don't even, you're not showing uh, patience and tolerance and temperance around the brothers, but at your job, a good boy, a good boy, the Lord sees that. So it's easy to fake it to a certain degree. We can fake it to a certain degree. But we cannot hide the innermost depth or inner depths, most innermost parts of our heart or our mind from Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai on our sincerity, integrity, on our true love for the brotherhood. You see, but to be patient at the job and then around brothers, impatient or a tyrant, that means your heart is in the world. It's not really in the midst of the congregation of the saints or elect, okay? Exhibiting rotten fruit or sour grapes, if you will. That's all I wanted to say on that. So the fruits of the spirit is kind, warm-hearted, tender, patient, temperate, and uplifting or edifying, which means to build up. That's the fruits of the spirit amongst the brotherhood of truth. Very, very important. Well, you know, what I do a lot is, let me tell you, hey, look, I, I go on brother's page. I'm looking at, are they just self-centered? Are they sharing other brothers? You ain't got to share mine. I can care less. But are they sharing other brothers lessons? Are they dropping a scripture or two every now and then? Or are they being self-centered? When you look at a building structure, every brick is interdependent on another brick. To the left and right, 
above and below. You poke out a brick and then the structure begins to decay and fall apart because of this me, 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 you know, I'm going to get mine. That's a nigga spirit. I'm just trying to get mine. I'm going to get mine. It's one thing about the Negro mindset that vexes my spirit, man. I'm going to get mine. I just got to get mine. Because these men are, they're really male prostitutes. As long as the price is right, they can easily be manipulated and paid off by the devil. How much can I pay you to create a false flag event or say you've been attacked by the brothers? You see some shit. See, so watch that I'm a get mine type nigga. Because as long as the price is right, He'll put his ass up in the air for the B system. I'm just telling you, I'm speaking from experience. You see, but when that integrity is firm, no price can buy out a, a brother that's sincere because he feared you how about shimmy how shy or cockadosh. You see, he can't be bought out. But a male prostitute or a harlot will go a whoring after other gods which really the prince of the power of this world, or Sleazy E, is a false god in this kingdom, the wicked, Job 9 and 24. So the fruits of the spirit don't lie. Just needed to say that. Shalom, beloved. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. And to the beloved, well, all praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem, or Kadrash, to the 144,000, the apostles, to the elders of Great Millstone, to the beloved brothers of the elect of the house of Israel, of the house of David, to the beloved ladies of the house of Israel, of the house of David, listening and learning in meekness and humility, as the scriptures have said to do so. To you we say, Shalom. Peace be unto you. All praises to you, how about Shimmy Habashai and Baraka Thumb. Blessings to you all. Blessings. Baraka Thumb. All right. We pray for the elect that they be protected and guided. All right. In the straight and narrow path towards the kingdom of deliverance. And to remain diligent always and sincere and grounded in the doctrine and faith through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, protected during Jacob's trouble, strengthened and uplifted always through the spirit of from on high. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yeshua in the Bad Baba. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatham, Shalom.